Good evening, everyone. How are you guys? So it's Thursday evening. You guys are here live with Brandy. Um, so my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. And I am the Dixieville Paint Brand Ambassador. Let me come a little bit closer to the camera. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. See me all right. Um, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about dirty drawers. You know, who has dirty drawers? Not that kind. This kind behind me. Um, so you guys, tonight, if you have any questions, come on, and I will answer questions as I go. Um, I can kind of see my comments, but not very well. Hey, Sheila. Um, I'm a little frazzled today. You guys, I leave tomorrow. I'm going to be teaching in Ontario, California at the Redesign with Dixie Bell Conference. There are still tickets available, so if you guys have something or need something to do this weekend, come join us in Ontario, California. We're going to do all things painting, but tonight I'm talking drawers with you guys. So I'm going to go around to the back side here. I'm talking to you guys about drawers. So if you've been following my page for a while, do you guys know what this piece is? Does this look familiar? So this is a piece from my own home. And for quite some time now, I've been meaning to finish off the insides of the drawers. Um, and our, the pieces in our own home always wait the longest, so this has been sitting. But right now, this is what the inside of the drawers look like. And they're not super gross. They're just old and kind of dingy. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I would take care of drawers, some, some different solutions for the insides of drawers. Let's scoot this a little closer. Okay. So... Like I said, these here aren't dirty, but what I would do first to start is kind of assess the needs of your drawer. So if it's in really relatively good condition, I will usually leave my drawers in original condition just to oil the wood and, um, and leave the box as original. But on these, they're just really old and stained, and so I want to make them cute and pretty inside. So I already have a stencil on the sides of these drawers. And it's done in a creamy white and then a navy blue color that goes great with the mustard on the front. And so inside, I'm going to actually put a wallpaper inside of these. And this is the paper I chose. I'll show you guys up front, up close. Hi everyone, I'm sorry I can't see my comments tonight and I don't have a helper, so I'll come on afterwards and answer any questions. So this is the wallpaper I chose. Now this wallpaper, I love wallpaper. It's my first choice for drawer liner when I can get it. And I will order this off Wayfair. Um, you can find inexpensive rolls for like, not the peel and stick kind. <laughs> um, and you know, $15 a roll, but look how thick these are. This is gonna do a mountain of drawers. And it's a cute pattern, very neutral. Um, and there's a couple of things I look for when I'm shopping for wallpaper. Number one, this is a vinyl wallpaper. Um, being vinyl means that this will be wipeable. So if these drawers get dusty inside or something spills or whatever happens to insides of drawers, an ink pen leaks or whatever, this will be wipeable. Wallpapers are nice, thick papers. The other thing I look for is, is your paper pre-pasted or not? And it will tell you all in here. So it says it's pre-pasted. It says it's scrubbable. This is a fabulous idea for drawer liner. So that's what we're going to be using tonight. But let's get our drawer prepped and then we'll put this paper inside of it and make these super pretty. So the first thing I would do is I would start by cleaning my drawers with my white lightning. So Dixie Bell White Lightning is a cleaning product and it comes in a granulated form and I just dissolve it into a spray bottle of water and then I will spray my drawer down just like I would the body of my piece, the outside body. And I'm gonna wipe it down and just make sure there's no you know, dirt, dust, debris, anything inside these drawers. Um, I will usually avoid pieces that have really strong odors. So these don't smell bad or anything. It's, I mean, it's honestly, this is a really old piece. So for the age of it, it's in remarkably good condition. So once my drawer is nice and cleaned, I've cleaned it out, wiped it out. There's no dust or debris, anything. Um, I'm going to be painting the sides of my drawers and papering the bottom. So this is gonna be papered, but over here, I'm gonna paint this. And some papers, especially if you're not using a wallpaper, um, are porous. And the tannins from your wood can bleed through a paper too, just like they could through your paint. So I'm gonna take Dixie Bell Boss 
and Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer. I'm taking Dixie Belle Boss in white. I'm using white because I'm gonna paint my drawers white and my paper is a white. I'm gonna use white Boss. And I'm gonna paint the inside of this drawer. Just like I would paint a piece. Um, Boss goes on really nicely. It's a water-based product, so I can use my nice Dixie Belle brushes for painting it on. This is the Dixie Belle Mini, which, this is the Dixie Bell Mini, and I use this for laying on all my paint. And um, because this is a water-based product versus an oil base, I can wash this out of my good brushes really nicely so I don't have to be worried about using my good brushes, um, even putting on a primer like this. So I try to get my brush strokes nice and even. Um, any you know, unevenness that you have in your boss will show through to your paint. So I try to keep my primer coat. See how my brush strokes are all going in one direction. Um, and I will paint this entire drawer over. So boss is a stain and odor blocking primer. So if this drawer did have a musty scent like aged furniture a lot of time does, this will kind of encapsulate that scent. Um, so that when you paint over it, it really minimizes that, gets rid of that musty odor that old furniture can have. Nicotine smells, um, Boss is the answer for those things. So I'm going to go around and do all the sides of this drawer. Because I'm going to paint, I really want um, all of the inside of this drawer to be nice and finished. Because this is a piece I intend to keep in my own house for a long time to come, I want the drawers to be just as cute outside as they are inside. So I'm going around doing these um, inside edges here, all in my Dixie Belle Boss. I know my head is chopped off, guys. I'm like Super frazzled. I have an airplane to catch tomorrow. I've had a ton of errands to run, make sure my samples get to Southern California ahead of me. Um, I need to pack my suitcase. We had so much stuff to do today. And one last side inside here. Getting all the way into the corners. So who is joining us tomorrow? In Ontario. Most people are flying in tomorrow. I think Dixie Bell staff is already there. Um, Christana, one of the other Dixie Bell brand ambassadors, was on her way today. She took a plane from Germany all the way to Ontario, California. And now I'm going to go ahead and edge along the edges of my drawer. Because when I'm doing the inside, I don't want to forget these edges either. Just got a little drip in there, so I'm going to brush the drip out so it doesn't create a bump in my paint. And I just use my brush and I'm just tapping it along the very edges. That got a little runny, so I'm making sure I clean that up. Tap it along this edge here. And then this is finished in my paint color. So now I've got my drawer totally covered in Dixie Belle Boss. So I'm going to set this one aside and we'll let this one dry. I'm going to come in here and check my comments really quick. Oh, Ginger, <laughs> my boxer puppy. She's so good, you guys, but she's a pup. And as she's gotten more comfortable, she's gotten more active. So it would be really hard to have her on a live right now because um, she's a puppy. She's such a good girl, you guys. We live out on five acres, and she knows her boundaries. She goes outside and hangs out and watches the deer and um, she's just a good girl okay so this is another drawer that I've done in my Dixie Belle boss and it's nice and dry so once my boss is dry I will take one of the Dixie Belle sanding sponges just like this it's a little 220 grit sanding sponge and I just gently will sand my boss just make sure it's nice and smooth that any dust that might have gotten stuck in there is gone and then with a damp rag, I just will wipe away my dust. So let's go ahead 
and cut our paper to fit the inside of our drawer. Oh, thank you so much, Rebecca. Okay, sorry you guys, I can't see my comments. I'm a little far away tonight. So now I'm going to take my vinyl wallpaper and I'm gonna cut this to size. So when I'm cutting my, my wallpaper, I'm gonna start out with a piece that's just a little bit too big for my drawer. Because I'm gonna trim it to size once I lay it. So I kind of roll it out and see which way gives me the best fit with the least waste of my paper. Because this is fairly expensive for a paper, although this was only $15 a roll. I don't want to waste any that I don't have to. And I will press it down inside my drawer. Let's see, from front to back. And I'm going to roughly cut, I'll mark it with my finger just to make a little crease line um, at the back of my drawer and I'm going to cut along that line. And this is nice because it's a geometric pattern. Yeah, I am struggling with this tonight. I'm telling you guys I'm tired. Um, this is a nice geometric pattern so it has lines on it that I can use as my cut lines too. So once I know, and you can measure your drawer out if you want to you know, use a tape measure for that, but see how I just creased it with my fingers? That gave me my cut line. And now I can flip this over to the front and I can see exactly where I creased it. I can cut a straight line right across my paper. I'm gonna cut it a little large. I would rather have too much than not enough and I can trim the excess once, in once it is inside of my drawer. Yeah, that geometric pattern really helped me cut a clean straight line. So let's get this out of the way. So this particular paper that I'm using is a pre-pasted paper, which is amazing. Look on your package. If your paper is pre-pasted, you'll be ecstatic with it. Um, if your paper is not pre-pasted, for example, if you want to use like a gift wrap, and gift wrap makes great drawer liner, um, the difference is, is that most gift wraps um, are not going to be a vinyl, so they won't be wipeable, which means you just want to put a clear coat over the top of your gift wrap. Um, unless you want it to just be replaceable, and then you could put it in with like thumbtacks or little glue dots or anything that you wanted so that it could be replaceable. So I just did the same thing, and I ran my fingers along the side of my drawer to score my paper for the side, and now I'm going to cut the excess from the side. And then I should have roughly, so see what I did there? I've got, I just creased it. That's the side of my drawer. So now I'm gonna cut, make that cut as well. And then if all went well, I should have a piece that's about the right size of my drawer and any trimmings I need to make will be like a fingernail length maybe. So this will end up being a scrap right here, which is not bad. If I, you know, this could be used for like the front of a drawer if I wanted to use this on another piece. So I save scrap papers all the time. So let me make sure this fits my drawer okay. Uh, these drawers are almost perfectly square, so this paper could go either way. So it's a little large, but um totally trimmable. Okay, so remember I told you guys about the benefits of a pre-pasted paper? Do you know what that means? It means I just have to activate the paste on this with a little bit of water. I love pre-pasted wallpapers. If this was not a pre-pasted paper, um, if this was not a pre-pasted paper, you can use a few things as your adhesive. You can use wallpaper paste because we're laying wallpaper. So wallpaper paste is a great adhesive. You can use the Dixie Belle clear coats as your adhesive. Um, the satin or the flat works great. So I just wet the back side of my paper um, and now I'm positioning it inside of my drawer. 
and I'm gonna flatten it all around. Looks so good. I love, love, love this. So this is where I am so far. And I'll go around and flatten it. I use my fingers and get it into the edges. And now I wanna get rid of all the bubbles in this. Um, I don't have any that I can see, but you know laying papers that there's usually bubbles in everything. I'm scrolling up in my comments, you guys. Yeah, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, Ginger is a, is a super good dog. She's out here with me all the time. I just think she's too distracting to be on lives with me right now. When she gets a little bit older, but she wants to play all the time, and she does. She plays fetch with me. Um, she sits in here and she's on her phone. So this is a brayer, which is like a rolling pin tool. It's got a silicone edge on it. Um, no, I didn't use the spray ball that has the white lightning. Look, they're all labeled. Water. Just water. I put this white lightning on the floor because <laughs> I would do that. So I will use my brayer and I'm smoothing out my paper. Okay. All the way into my edges. And then where I've got little edges that are just, I mean, it's, I, I need to trim this ever, ever, ever so slightly, you guys. It really is a pretty good fit. Got a couple bubbles over here I want to get rid of. You can use a um, plastic scraper to push it into the edges. In fact, I'm going to grab one right now. So just like one of these here, and I can use this and push it all into the edges of my drawer. And then I will crease it along and then crease it along the back. And that will give me nice clean lines because I'm going to come back and trim with a razor blade. Um, because this is wallpaper, it's a nice durable paper for my drawers too. So I get, it has a lot of play, whereas some papers can get fragile when they're wet. You love the piece behind me. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, I, yeah, I haven't posted that one yet. If you guys watch my Thursday lives, there's usually a piece behind me that I haven't posted yet. That's my staging wall back there. That's why. That is a new piece, you guys. And the floral on that is the new redesign with Prima. Can you use my husband's credit card <laughs> for what? Um, yeah, these drawers are so cute. I love this piece. It will never leave my house. So I'm doing one drawer tonight. It's probably gonna take me another year to finish all the other drawers. It's only a four drawer piece. So this is the extent of the trimming that I had to do inside my drawer. Tiny little scrap piece. And that was just by, you know, I didn't have a tape measure or nothing, anything like that. Um, that was just placing it and creasing it with my fingers. Okay, and then I've got, I'm going to trim this side too. Gosh, does it even need it? Yeah, I don't know, that's pretty good. So this is my drawer liner here. It's really a clean, nice fit. Trim with an X-Acto knife, exactly. I'm just using a regular razor blade like this, but an X-Acto knife would work. I'm going to go ahead and trim this last side, but it's like barely a fingernail width where I probably could leave it. I mean, it's such a tiny little scrap I'm gonna cut off. Okay, so this is what I trimmed off that last one. Tiny, tiny little bit. You wanna see the pulls on this? They're so cute. They're these little bumblebees. Yeah, so this is just a vinyl wallpaper. Again, I got this off Wayfair. It's about $15 a roll. It's vinyl, it's wipeable. So now I've got a drawer liner. I just feel a little bubble in here. So I just roll out any air pockets that I can feel with my fingers. Okay, and then I do wanna paint this drawer. So this is just my white boss around the edges. And you can choose to do your paint before or after your paper. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint this, and the color I chose is going to be Dixie Belle Fluff, which is white. So right now, I'm just, I just have um, 
white boss on there, which is a primer, but I want this to be a nice painted finish. So I will just take my, um, again, my Dixie Belle brush, my mini, and I'm just gonna paint the inside of this just like I did with the boss. Um, I would probably choose to paint my drawer before the paper, but because I'm on camera and I wanted to be able to do both inside this drawer, I couldn't have wet paint and be trying to place that paper, so that's why I'm doing the paint afterwards. So you guys would probably want to reverse this at home. Do your paint first and then put your paper in after. And that's probably how I'll do the rest of these drawers. Because now I'm having to be really careful that I don't paint all up onto my pretty paper that I just laid in my drawer. So nice clean brush strokes. And I've got a nice finished drawer side or drawer interior that matches with my drawer sides. Oh, contact paper is the devil. Contact paper is the devil. No furniture refinisher has ever said, I'm so glad they put this contact paper in there 30 years ago. Nobody has ever said that, just so you guys know. Yeah, those are my bumblebee pools. They went with the mustard yellow. I found those at Marshall's, you guys, and I wish I could say that you could ever find another pair or another set, but I have looked everywhere. I even know the brand that they are, and I still have never been able to find another set exactly like them. Um, they're Cynthia Rowley brand that's the designer and it was a luck of the draw and I happened to grab enough when I grabbed them I'm so glad I did because I've never seen them again and a million people have asked me about them you can get close but not the same um, on the edges this is a stencil so this is a stencil by redesign with Prima and then the colors on here are Dixieville fluff and in the navy and I just stenciled the sides and I'm papering the interior. And now I'm painting the edges along the paper with my Dixie Belle fluff. So I'm actually really excited for this. This piece in my house holds all of my art supplies. So my markers, acrylics, my nice art supplies, not the garage stuff that goes in my workspace. My um, artist brushes, watercolors, things like that is what I keep in this piece in my house. So this is my piece, my art supplies, and it's one of my favorites that I've ever done. And then same as I did when I painted my boss, I wanna finish these edges of my drawer as well. So this does take some time. If I'm doing this on a customer's piece, I do add an upcharge for finishing the insides of drawers. So make sure you do that. But um, like I said, this is a piece for my own home and I totally think it's worth the extra time and effort. If it's gonna be you know, something you wanna keep in your home. And um, I'm gonna show you next what I will do with drawers that are in better condition than these were. These were not in poor condition. They're just really old. This whole piece was really old. It's in a really old empire style. I would say it's probably from the 1920s. And it's definitely had a life before me and that's what I love about it. So I'm just cutting in the edges, being really careful that I don't get paint onto my paper now that it's laid. Um, I do want to point out that I'm painting with um, fluff. I've got one coat of boss and one coat of fluff on here and I don't have to do another coat. Just that one coat of primer and this one coat of white is giving me plenty of coverage. And then that primer also ensures that my, that my paint is not gonna start yellowing over time. Um, I can choose to seal this with a top coat, wax it, um, put some Big Mama's Butter on it, anything I wanna do now to finish off the interior of these drawers. So I've got a coat of paint all around the sides. I've got my paper on the inside and I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. And this is my finished drawer. I think we are seeing the back of the drawer. Yes, this is the back side of the drawer. This would be totally optional to paint. No, Nobody is ever, ever, ever going to see that unless you pull the drawer entirely out. So absolutely optional. I chose not to paint it on mine. Yeah, because all the other sides 
of this are completely done. So absolutely optional to do that backside. So next, I wanna show you guys what I would do with a drawer that's in pretty good condition that doesn't need to be painted. So let me get some of this stuff out of my way and we'll talk about doing an interior of a drawer like this. Okay. So I'm showing off all the pieces for my own home tonight. This is another piece I've got in my own house. Can you guys see? Um, and this is a really nice piece of furniture. It's Bassett furniture. Um, it's really nice, a nice quality. The drawers are actually exceptionally clean, no stains or anything on them. So all I'm gonna do for this, and I do this on all my wood pieces, is I oil the wood of the drawer. Set it like that. So for this, I would take my Big Mama's Butter. So I always do something to the drawers, whether it's paper or paint or, um, you know, whatever, or just oiling it with Big Mama's Butter. They always get something because the inside of your piece is just as important as the outside. Oh, cabinetparts.com has bee pole, acorn bee poles. I'm gonna go look, I'm gonna go look. Yeah, so I have this piece in my house too. This is the patina paint piece. So for this, I'm gonna take Big Mama's Butter in Orange Grove. See, mine's kind of dirty because I use it inside drawers. This is Orange Grove. And I take a big floppy brush like this. Um, so these are by Redesign with Prima. And these are their natural bristle brushes and I love them for putting on my butter. And I just tip it into my butter. It's nice and soft because it's warm here. Um, and I will go around. Okay, so let me show you guys what this drawer box is made of. This bottom here is an MDF. It's not real wood. Um, now, I don't think that takes away from the quality of the piece. You can look underneath it and see. It's still in really good condition. That's how it was originally made. It's clean, it's sturdy, um, but I'm not gonna oil this because it's basically a paper, a, a laminate over the top. Uh, but I am gonna oil the sides. All around here is what I wanna pay attention to. So pay attention to how your drawer box is made this does not need it on the bottoms. So we're gonna get in here to these sides. And right away, you can see that it just adds moisture to that, this wood. It also makes my drawer boxes smell like heaven. And this is gonna add life to the old wood that your furniture pieces are made of. This is like putting lotion on old skin. It's, <laughs> That sounds terrible, but um, you know, wood gets dried out as it gets old. Um, yeah, I mean, this isn't, it's not a solid wood drawer bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, medium density fiberboard. Yes, it's an, an artificial wood product. It's not real wood. So there's no need to put, you know, an oil on it. I'm paying attention to the parts that are made of real wood. You can definitely tell the difference touching it and look at the bottom. There's nothing wrong with it. It's well made, it's sturdy. Um, my whole piece was solid wood, but the drawer bottoms are made like that. So there just came a point in time. This is probably, I would say this piece is probably from the 1970s. It's not super old. Um, but they just changed how they started making furniture. It got more efficient. Um, like I said, this is in my own house. I still kept the piece. I still think it's a beautiful piece, but those drawer bottoms are not solid wood. So how you can tell if you've got enough of your butter on your Big Mama's butter on your piece is it will change the color of your wood. So I'm gonna do this and I'll do half of this drawer side and I'll leave the other half unoiled so you guys can see what this oil does to the color of your wood. Okay, can you see right there? I just oiled this wood. Like I picture this wood as saying, ah, oh, right now, it's so appreciative. Efficient translates to cheaper price parts, exactly. How long would you wait before putting clothing into the drawer? So if I was, if I was doing the entire drawer in here, I will come back afterwards and I will just wipe it down with a rag. So this, um, once it absorbs into the wood, it's not greasy feeling at all. Do you have any residue at all? Come back and wipe it with a rag and it's it's absorbed into the wood. The wood is porous and it's absorbing the oils in the Big Mama's butter. 
So if you don't want that to translate into your clothes or anything, just come back and wipe it with a rag. Um, um, like a thin coated paper like they do on cabinets. Exactly. But it's a non-porous material, so there's no point in oiling it. And look at this beautiful drawer side. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. This takes a few minutes to do a drawer box. So then pay attention to the underside of your drawer. If you've got a wood drawer glide on here, the Big Mama's Butter is perfect in your wood drawer glide. And I will, I will oil the drawer glide too if I've got a wooden drawer glide. Do I have a photo bomber? Do I have a photo bomber? He's a handsome one. Oh, he's hiding now. You just made him hide. Drawers are your nemesis, gluing them back. Yep, crayons, nail polish. Crayons or nail polish, those are the perfect times when you would do, treat a drawer like we treated this one. This is your crayon or nail polish drawer. So that stuff is harder than heck to get off. You'd be better off just putting paper on it. But when your drawer is in really good condition, oil the box. Drawers are made of wood for a reason. It's a beautiful, functional material for a drawer. So I don't paper them or paint them if they're in good condition. That's my middle son, Ashton, you guys. He's my eight, almost nine year old. All right, this is my last drawer side here. Um, this piece has 12 drawers, so I might finish this in another year too. I don't wash this drawer after, or this brush after every use. It actually stays really soft with the Big Mama's Butter in it. I, this is a brush I use over and over for the same purpose. But sometimes drawers can be dirty or you get little bits of wood from the, you know, massaging the wood. And I will wash it out occasionally, but not after every use. So this is my side that I already did. You can see that it's oiled. So this is a great treatment for natural wood. If you have a full piece that you're keeping in a natural wood finish, this is a great furniture polish too. So now I've got a drawer that smells fabulous. It smells like oranges. Um, I've sealed that wood. I've moisturized it. Jamie, we are doing drawers tonight. We papered a drawer. We painted a drawer. We're doing drawer interiors. This is a wallpaper we've installed in the drawer. Um, so like I said, if you were gonna do this, say with a gift wrap, then the stage you would do after is you would wanna put a clear coat over the top of this so that it's wipeable. Um, this is a vinyl wallpaper, so I don't need a clear coat over the top. It's already a wipeable paper. <laughs> yeah, two drawers. So that's it. That's a couple of different interior treatments from it for a drawer is using that, um, the Dixie Belle Boss, which is your stain and odor bro blocking primer to get rid of that musty smell, cigarette smell, anything like that. Papering drawers using your Dixie Belle clear coat. In this case, I had a pre-pasted wallpaper, which made it so, so, so easy worth the $15 a roll. Um, and then if you've got a beautiful old wood drawer box that doesn't need any treatment inside like that, oil it up with your Big Mama's Butter and it will moisturize that wood. And then if you're gonna be putting clothing or anything on the interior, just wipe back any excess, massage it into your wood and it's porous, it's absorbed into that wood. Now. You know, your clothes might end up smelling a little bit like oranges, but that's not really a bad thing. Um, how do you clean up a velvet drawer? Ugh. Um, what do I use for velvet drawers? I use number one, if it's salvageable. If it's not, if it's just dirty and gross, I usually will remove it with a razor blade, scrape it out. If it's salvageable, I will clean it up with a lint brush. You can spray them, wipe it clean, and then I'll clean it up with a lint brush, and that's about the best you can do. Velvet drawers are not my friend. That's another thing that furniture restorers are like, I'm so glad they made velvet drawers 50 years ago. Um, felt drawer liners, I usually take those out because they're so old I don't even want to try to clean it. Did you paint or paper the inside? So this was a natural drawer box. We did not paint or paper, but we also did a painted and papered drawer on this video too. So go back and watch the replay. Um, again, you guys, I'm leaving on an airplane tomorrow. So I'm going to meet a lot of you guys in person. I'm super excited. It's gonna be a really fun weekend. If you guys can't join me this weekend, there's another event, um, November 3rd in Edison, New Jersey is the Bells and Bow Tour and I'll also be um, an instructor there. Um, so I'm gonna let you go tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on my page at Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, everywhere. 
Um, everywhere. everywhere. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for joining me. You guys have a great evening and a great weekend. Good night.